Hi there, my name is Alex Downs, and today I'll be presenting on the thin layer drying of coffee beans. So, producing high quality coffee depends on the methods of drying, processing, and roasting. After harvesting, the coffee cherries, which are shown below, must be dried to reduce the moisture content to roughly 12%. This is kind of a balance because if you over dry the beans, they're going to crack and reduce the value of the beans. But if you under dry them, then they'll fall victim to spoilage from fungi or bacteria. So historically, there have been two different drying techniques. The first is the wet method, which is relatively newer. This is where the pulp is mechanically separated from the beans, and the beans are run through a forced air drying machine. This method ensures a more uniform, high quality product. There's also the dry method, which has been used for centuries. Here, the entire coffee cherry is left intact, and it's sun dried on these huge uh, patios. This can take about four weeks and is very labor intensive as you need somebody to be raking this constantly to prevent the formation of fungi and mold. So what I'm modeling here is what's called thin layer drying, which is shown in this diagram on the right. So what you have is coffee placed in thin ventilated layers inside the mechanical dryer. Then you have the dryer releasing a near laminar stream of air over the beans at a controlled temperature. We chose to model this scenario as it's most modern yields a more uniform coffee, and results in a higher quality, more high value product. So with this model, I make a couple of assumptions. First, I assume that we're using undried coffee cherries that are roughly spherical and that have an average radius of 6.5 centimeters. I'm also assuming that the drying adheres to fixed second law of diffusion, which is shown below, where M is the average moisture content and D is the effective diffusion co coefficient and T is time in hours. Another model assumption is that the moisture ratio follows the equation shown right here, where you have D, which is diffusivity, T, which is time, and A, which is the half thickness of the coffee cherry or the radius. So to make this model work, I had to put a little bit of work into finding the diffusivity. So I had some experimental data that I graphed with temperature and found the equation below, which uses temperature in degrees Celsius. Here's the actual program itself. So the way that it works is that the user will be given this prompt that says, please input temperature in degrees Celsius at which your coffee cherries are going to be dried. And so this temperature is taken and it's plugged into the diffusivity equation. And then you have a constant, which is the half thickness of the cherry. And then all of this information is run through the moisture ratio equation right here. From there, what I do is I graph a line at 0.12, which is 12% moisture ratio, because that's the ideal moisture that you want for the best coffee batch. Then I plot time versus the moisture ratio and the ideal moisture, and I use poly x poly to find the intersection of those two lines. So basically, at what time is the moisture ratio going to be ideal? So overall, what this program does is the user inputs the temperature that they want to set their um, laminar drying machine to, and then it spits out your ideal drying time, which is how long you want to keep that machine on to get the best type of coffee. So here's a couple demonstrations of the concept. First, I entered in 35 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty typical drying temperature. Um, when you do this, it takes about 10.5 hours for the entire batch to finish up drying. You can see the graph here has a drying curve in blue and the ideal moisture level in green. So you start around 0.9, with the moisture level and then it decreases down to zero. And the intersection is somewhere around 10. When you increase the temperature up to 45 degrees, the drying time decreases to 10.2 hours. Finally, when you increase the temperature to 55 degrees, the drying time decreases to about 9.5 hours. So that means that with a, dry, with a temperature increase of 20 degrees Celsius, you decrease your drying time by about one hour. So this model successfully demonstrates that as temperature increases, the time to reach ideal moisture levels decreases. It's worth noting, though, that the beans shouldn't really be dried above 55 degrees Celsius to prevent cracking and other damage. Thank you very much for watching.